afternoon. Glad to have all of you today. Uh, it's a blessing to be back in the house of the Lord. How many of you are happy to be here tonight? Amen. I know a lot of you are wore out and, and exhausted, uh, but that's okay. Uh, me and Brother Bill... Goodness gracious, uh, we're praying for a double portion tonight. How many of you would like that, that we're here this morning? Amen. See some more souls saved, some more lives turned around, some more miracles. Amen. It sure would be a blessing. Uh, that's what we're looking for, nothing, nothing less than a miracle tonight and God in the place. Amen. Uh, I'll get my ushers, if you would, come forward at this time as my ushers uh, come forward and before I say my prayer, I just want to give a word of warning for all of you that were here this morning and experienced what we experienced in the power of God and uh, the Lord moving in your life. Always be on the lookout. The devil don't like what the Lord's trying to do. Amen. Anybody testify to that? Anytime the Lord tries to do something, Satan always tries to combat it. So when you get up in the morning and you wake up and there's the devil, and hopefully that's not, hopefully you're not married to him. But when you see him in the morning, tell him, no, I've still got the victory that I had yesterday. Amen. Because the victory is in who? Jesus. The victory is in Jesus. Uh, this week, anything that you give is going to go to our preachers, those that are preaching uh, the revival service. You're more than welcome to write out a check. If you do, write it out to Englewood Baptist Church. You can get credit uh, at the end of the year. But every single dime that's taken up uh, will go to the preachers that preach this revival this week. Would you stand with me? Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight just thankful for everything that you have done. Lord, it is a blessing to be in your presence. And Lord, it's a blessing to see that you're still at work. And Lord, you're still doing mighty miracles even in the day that we live in today. We're thankful for that. And Lord, I pray that you'd bless this time of worship, this time of praise. God, I pray, Lord, that we would uh, lift up our eyes and lift up our voices toward heaven from which cometh our help. Lord, I pray that we would praise you for everything that you have done. Lord, praise you for who you are. And Lord, praise you most of all for saving our souls. Lord, I pray that your presence, Lord, your Holy Spirit would be in the midst of this place tonight. If it be somebody here lost, Lord, let them leave here saved. Lord, if it's somebody discouraged, let them leave here encouraged. Lord, we know that you know exactly what each and every one of us needs. And Lord, I pray that you will meet all of those needs tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. If you love the Lord, let's start off by praising him tonight. Amen. <laughs> Like you blessed, man. I know I do. Through the sunshine and rain, even sorrow and pain, Jesus is my comfort and guide. For His love comforts me, and His grace has set me free. And someday I will stand. By his side, I am blessed. I am blessed every day that I live. I am blessed when I wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest. Brothers and 
sisters on this earth. We are one by our new birth, and someday we're gonna share beyond the sky. Everybody sing with me. I am
How many of you are thankful for the blood tonight? Yeah. Amen. I just want to say, I know everybody's standing. You're more than welcome to sit down if you're comfortable sitting. Stand if you want to stand. Run if you want to run. Do whatever you feel led. But I don't want you hurting yourself trying to stand the whole time just because we stand. Be comfortable doing whatever you feel led to do. I want to say something, but that's okay. I want to introduce who I had right here. <laughs> okay, now I can talk after I took a breath. Okay. Um... I have the honor of singing with Legacy this morning. This is Jack. He used to come down here. Brother Jack King was his uncle. And we had church this morning up there in McCullough. I've kind of done things I don't think I've ever done before, but I think Marty caught it on the camera. So, it's, so yes, it was, Lindsay. Yes, ma'am. But um, we sung this song, Glory Road, and I just, I just hope a seed was planted up there. Because I don't usually make contact, eye contact with people. I kind of look up at the thing, you know. I, I see my daddy and my mama, and I look out the window. But it's just, you know, you look around and you just get somebody. You know, they, they were smiling, then they looked a little, like, distraught. Then their eyes got red. So you just, we don't want nobody to go to hell. Right. Hop on that glory road. Yes. And go.
I love to put somebody on the spot. And what he's fixing to say is going to apply to us. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. See, Inglewood, y'all acting all dignified because we got visitors here tonight. Y'all putting up walls that we done tore down. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're here for one reason and one reason only. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the man that died between two thieves on an old rugged cross. I'm here to glorify him tonight, to praise him tonight, to bless him tonight. Why? Because he blessed me. He died for me. He forgave me. He saved me. So I'm going to praise the Lord tonight. It ain't out of style. It ain't out of order. Praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Okay, so this weekend, uh, the youth went to the ramp conference, spring ramp, I think it was called. Um, and I got to walking through, and my wife texted me, Jen texted me, said, hey, uh, we're going go to go this with the youth. Um, I was like, okay. And then I didn't know much about the ramp, so I looked it up. And uh, they're a Pentecostal church, okay? Okay? And everybody's like, oh, you automatically closed up right there. But you know what? I did too. I closed up. I researched them. And the way I was raised, the way I grew up, I shut down. I put barriers up. I was like, I'm going to go, but I'm just, I'm going to go, okay? I walked in there, and I had been praying all week. I said, God, open me up to what you want to have done, what, what your will is. Open me up. But I still walked into that room, into that sanctuary, whatever. I was closed up. I had walls built up, and I kept praying. I said, God, open me up, because I was... The, the raising hands, I was, I was, I quenched the spirit in a heartbeat because I was, that's the way I was raised. You sang three songs, sermon, you're done. Okay, you didn't raise your hand, you didn't walk to no altar, that was it. Okay, so that's how I was raised. So I was sitting here just my little shell. I wasn't going to do anything, but God said, I prayed and I just prayed. God said, lift up a hand. That's all you got to do. Lift up one hand, and I've got the rest. I lifted that hand up, and the rest of the weekend was an amazing experience. I've heard, I've been saved since eight, 2018. I went up there a saved man. But what I felt there, I have never felt before. The freedom I felt to worship, because there were so many people there that was just willing and open to worship. They didn't worry about what the person next to them was doing. They were honoring God. And the thing is about worship, and... Philip sent me that this week, uh, the week, and I guess God knew that I needed to hear it. Worship is not about how we feel. Worshiping God is about worshiping the one who died for us. Worshiping Him every song. Because there's some songs that we may not like. There's some genres we may not like. But guess what? That genre is not for us. That genre is for God. All right? So when you worship, worship him. You're honoring him. You're honoring what he has done for you. So open up. Break down those walls. Pray to God. If you've got a wall built right now, just pray. Pray for God to open it up. Make that move. Raise that hand. Sway back and forth. It doesn't matter. Run around. I don't care. Just open that up and let the Holy Spirit come in this place. Because if we are obedient to what he wants... If we are obedient to him and just obey what he says, he is going to fill this place. Look, I was in the back this morning, okay? I watched the cameras because that's what I helped do. I looked on the camera for a second, and I saw and felt the Holy Spirit in this place this morning. All we've got to do is just be obedient 
and he will fill this place and work. Like I said, I've been saved since 2018, but what I felt when the Holy Spirit came on me and what, the, what when the Holy Spirit came on my son and when the Holy Spirit came on my wife, you, you can't imagine what that is until you feel it. But all you have to do, I didn't have to do nothing. I raised my hand. That was it. I raised my hand, and God took care of the rest. All right? Be obedient to him. Worship him. Worship him not for yourself. Worship him for him. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. I promise you, the Holy Spirit has more for you than you can possibly imagine. As he said, the Lord told him, tear down the walls. If we'll tear down the walls, the Holy Spirit can fix everything in our life. Let's break the walls tonight. Amen.
How many of you glad to be here? Amen. Amen. We appreciate you coming back tonight. I felt like this morning, I'm how Joshua must have felt when he marched around Jericho. And I know for some of you that may be visiting, you don't know what happened, but it started right here, and it started walking around the wall, and everybody was walking around the wall and praising the Lord. And boy, it just made all the difference in the world in church when the Spirit of God is leading you to do something. And so we're just glad you're here tonight. I'm glad to be here. Man, it's been a, it's been a long time. Somebody asked me, said, you nervous? Yeah. You better be. It could affect you. Take your Bible tonight. All last few Wednesday night, and even in Sunday school, Brother Randy and Brother Adam has did everything within their power to bisect my message. And over and over and over, and I finally told Brother Randy to just stop. I don't know where you're watching it Wednesday night or not, but just don't mention nothing else because the, further, the more he talked, the deeper he got into my message. There's a reason tonight that we're here, and I want the title of it is just simple. It, it can be, it's called the mercies of God. And when you look up that word in the Greek as far as mercy is concerned, it's the fact that God allowed Jesus to do something that we couldn't do ourselves and paid the price, sanctified us, went to glory and made the atonement so that me and you would have a place in heaven. And we ought to be grateful for that. And we ought to give him a hand clap of praise for that. Brother Randy and I were talking in the office a little while ago. I was up in Michigan in a revival. He was laughing about it because we hadn't mentioned it. But I was up there, and great big old church. I really don't know why I got up there, but I didn't know how I did. And me and Betty was up there, snow about six or seven inches deep, and they called that a frost up there. Down here, it stops everything at school, cleans the shelves off at the grocery store, and fills your car up with gas half inch but I got up there and I went in there and stood up there just about like I'm standing here now and I said let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise I clapped and Betty clapped and that was it and it got real quiet in there and I realized I had done something that I shouldn't have done so after church, I couldn't wait. I don't know, the message probably wasn't no good. But after ch I was waiting to, for church to end, I wanted to ask that preacher what was wrong with giving the Lord a hand clap of praise. Brother Randy just mentioned that let everything got breath in it, praise the Lord. And undoubtedly, if you're sitting here on this pew tonight, you're breathing, and you ought to thank him for it. But I asked him, I said, uh, preacher, I noticed when I asked the church to give the Lord a hand clap of praise, nobody clapped but me and my wife. He looked at me and said, we don't give men a praise. And we don't clap for men. I said, well, best I can remember, I didn't say nothing about no man. I said, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. And I went on and quoted a little scripture for him, but it... It, it never did get out of its banks by no means because they had an old ritual. And folks, I'm telling you tonight, we got a purpose for being here tonight, Amen. and that purpose is to praise God plus nothing. Amen. There ain't nothing else that we need to do other than find our purpose tonight. And when you go to talking about the mercies of God, God has been real good to us. Amen. Real good to us. He was good to us this morning. Amen. But I want you to understand something. We've been called everything in the world, and even the Jews called us dogs. You go back in the first Samuel, and that's where we've been in Sunday school for a while, and talking about David. Little fella didn't think he could do anything 
but God had a purpose for David to deliver lunch to his brothers that day. And you may not can sing like these folks did tonight. You may not can play the piano like she's playing it. You may not can do anything but occupy a pew. That's all God requires of you. What if everybody could sing? If I could sing, none of them would have got to sing. And I sing at home and in the car. And uh, so if you just, all you got to do in your purpose in life is to come and be faithful and occupy a pew, God's happy with that. But in occupying that pew, you ought to praise the Lord. Oh, Goliath looked up at that little old boy. Saul asked him, said, David, what are you doing out here? Man, do you not see that fellow down there? He said, that is a big dog. Nine foot nine inches is a pretty good sized man. That's a big dog. But not only was he called a big dog, he was called a fighting dog. If you were to go back a little early in 174, you could see that. And then over in the New Testament, there's a girl that was mentioned a dog by the Lord. And she came and requested that the Lord do something for her. He said, I don't have anything to eat. And the Lord looked at her and said, it's not right. It's not meat for me to give the bread of my family to the dog. And she looked at him and said, but the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. And he looked back at her and said, your faith has made you whole. She probably eat steak that night for supper. Simply because she was motivated with a purpose, even though the crowd was among us, to stay on track and get to Jesus. Because when nobody else can help us, the Lord can. When you go to talking about, and this is not my message, but I, I've looked at it for years and shared it, and I want to tell you something about this being called a dog. All Gentiles, see, all of us in here tonight are dogs. Now, you probably don't need to be mad at Brother Bill. I didn't call you a dog, the Bible does. And that was the reference to the Gentiles, was dogs. And I'd have never thought anything about this for years because I helped my dead-in-law farm and I'd come in after pouring concrete with Randy and uh, Johnny and I'd go to the field and work the rest of the night. And about 12 o'clock on a lot of those nights, he would get, tell me, he said, Bill, go down there and load them dogs up. I got a picture of them dogs and him in the pen with them feeding them. And the only two dogs that stayed outside was Rock and Queen. And old Queen was a strack dog. Now, you don't know nothing about fox hunting, I know. You probably ain't never seen a fox. Before I let these boys have the cows, that bull got to holler. And I don't know if you ever heard a bull holler or not, but right across the road from me now is them million-dollar home. And them kids ain't never heard a cow ball. And they sure ain't heard a bull scream. And I was at the mailbox the other day, and that bull got wound up. Every breath, he just screaming. There was a little old girl across the road. She took off running to the house. I would have liked to know what she told her mama that was out there hollering and carrying on. But that bull had him a time. He was letting all them cows know I'm the, I'm the big dog here. And so they're not used to that. We got a, a group of folks in America that probably ain't never seen a cow. They don't know where their food come from. We're living in a society that's lost its direction. I'd go down there and get them dogs, there's five of them, I'd put them on the tailgate of the truck. And we'd turn old Queen loose, and it wouldn't be long, and that was before the lake ever got backed up. North River ran at the foothills of where we were planting corn and cotton. And 
After about an hour, you'd hear old Queen. She may be a mile and a half down the swamp, but she'd bawl. And when she bawled, it wasn't but just a few seconds you could hear old Rock in behind her. And they'd run for about an hour, and he'd look at me and say, Bill, let them old dogs out off the tailgate. They were chained on the tailgate of the truck. I'm telling you this to tell you here's where a lot of people are. And after a little while, about midnight, he said, Bill, turn them out. I mean, they ain't on the back of the truck having a fit, barking, scratching. Ain't nothing. They locked up, chained up, but yet there's cutting up. So I let them go, and they come off the tailgate barking. I said, uh, Lee, what are them dogs barking for? They just come off the tailgate. This was his answer. They just mouthy. Y'all know anybody just mouthy? Amen. That's all right to raise your hand. Truth will set you free. I said, what do you mean? He said, they're just mouthy. He said, you ain't never seen nobody just mouthy? Now, I didn't relate none of this till after I got saved, but there's been a lot of mildly folks in church over the years, all kind of churches. So after about two or three hours, about a half a mile away from us, you'd hear them howling. Here's the church. I said, Lee, what's wrong with them dogs? He said, they're howling out. You know anybody ever howled out? Somebody might have said something they didn't like and they just left church and couldn't take it. I said, what do you mean by howling out? He said, they can't take it. Now, if you'd have been here this morning, some of you just visited tonight, I wish you had have been here. Boy, we had a time. All we needed was a ball and we could have played football in here. First time I ever went to a church of God, Owen Rice had told me, he said, Bill, in the parking lot at Carroll Creek Baptist Church, he said, Bill, your problem's over now. Mm -mm. Man, when you get saved, your problems are beginning because you're taking on the devil. He said, I want you to go to church with me tomorrow night. We're having a revival. I just got saved. I want to go to every revival around. And I went. And we got over on this side. It was Northport Church of God. They'll be here Wednesday. And I was sitting there and the preacher was preaching and things were getting good and folks was clapping and shouting and there wasn't no shouting going on at Carroll Creek Baptist Church. The biggest uproar they ever had was when termites got loose on the front porch. And I mean, that was one woman, I ain't, she ain't never had a holy grunt in her. But when she seen them termites, she come flying back in there and told her, and told the preacher, we finna get eat up. Man, I thought some kind of monster outside. I went out there and a bunch of little old termites. Really got her excited. And so she raised her hand about the termites, not about the Lord. I went down there with Owen. We sit on the right side. And after about 30 minutes of the church service and everybody praising the Lord, kind of like we're doing this morning, they started running around the wall. And I know some of y'all looking at me like, what are you talking about? All I can tell you is you ought to have been here this morning. I can't explain that. I don't know what the Lord done outside of getting on Brother Randy. And when he got on Brother Randy, he pointed at us and he got on us. And before you know it, we were going around and around the wall. And we had somebody you standing up testifying, bragging on the Lord. And boy, that's a blessing. But I had never seen nothing like that. The most excitement that church had was the day I got saved. And I don't know whether it shot over me or over what the Lord had done. But they had, a, they had a few holy grunts, especially the teacher, Sunday school teacher. Well, the next time they made a round, 
it was a little bigger. Instead of being 20, it was 30. And the next time they made a round, it was 40 instead of 30 and 20. Well, and I'll be honest with you, outside of my grandmother, I didn't know nothing about that. I mean, it, she didn't have nothing to run in but a house, but she could cut up in that house. And, but I expected it out of her because I grew up with it, and that's all I've ever heard her do. But when they made that other round, it looked like it was about 60 of them. And I, and, and I looked, and the fellow I went to church with was in the line. And a lot of y'all know Owen Ryan. I know Larry and him, Randy and them do. So I thought, well, they done got him up. They'll be after me next. And so I was sitting kind of to the side, and when I seen him come around the wall, I said, I said they're going to get me next. And sure enough, next time they come by, one lady reached out a hand, and I didn't want to embarrass her. I reached out my hand. She snatched me up and said, praise the Lord, let's go. Round the wall we'd go. Round and around till they got tired. They were just praising the Lord. I know people think, well, that's, that's kind of odd. Listen, the Holy Spirit don't never do the same thing twice. He'll get on you in a different way. He'll work through you in a different way. But what we ought to understand tonight when you go to talking about the mercies of God, that God's mercy has a purpose for you in this building. He's got a purpose for you at work and a purpose for you at home. God has a purpose for every one of us. And what we need to do is find his purpose and then put it to practice. Amen. Not only has he got purpose, Let me get through with these dogs, then I'll get on to the purpose. But I had a horn. Billy, you got my horn. Mike, do you get it? Connie? I had a big old bull horn, and we'd blow it when it would get time to, for the dogs to come back to the truck. He said, Bill, blow them in. It's getting daylight. Well, after that bunch had done howled out, we had them chained in the back of the truck. So there wasn't nothing left out there but Queen and Rock. But when it got daylight, you could see old Queen coming up the road. Blood running out of her ears. She had stayed in the fight. She had been down through all the briars and all the mess that was down on the river. She had blood running out of just about everywhere but she didn't give up the fight. She stayed in it. And that's saying something for the church. If we'd stay in the fight, the devil's going to make sure we have a fight. But we just need to stay in the fight and glorify the Lord. It wasn't, it wasn't long the old rock was coming behind Queen. And he too had stayed in the fight all night long, running something they were never going to catch but they stayed in it. And everything that we do down here, God's got a purpose for us to stay in the fight and make sure we let the devil know his head is bruised. I mean, if it takes it, you look down at him and tell him, devil, I want you to understand something. The blood has been applied and nothing going to wash away my sin but the blood of the lamb. And as far as you, you can go back to where you come from. God is good. All we got to do is find our purpose in life. And when you find it, it gives you the authority to address the devil with the power of God and the power of the Holy Spirit and tell him, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. And as he said this morning, I can go on down to the devil's camp and take back what he stole from me. And I'll tell you one thing he stole. He stole our praise. He stole our hallelujahs. He stole our glory to God. He stole our witness to those that are lost. The devil has took away every good thing that God's ever given us. So we got a purpose. Man, when you think about it, you think about the mercies of God. 
Man, some of y'all out there had the opportunity to lead to the Lord. Al, Bill, David, it's just a bunch of you. That was by call to the mercy of God, that God was good enough. We weren't worthy, was not worthy of Christ dying on the cross so that we could have life. And put that picture up there. I want you to look at something. That ain't him, but that portrays him pretty good. He has provided salvation Amen. for heathens. Amen. I certainly wasn't worthy. You look at it. Thorns pushed down in his head. No doubt then took a board and made sure they'd stay in there and drove them on down in his head. And because of the mercy of God, he stayed on that cross. Amen. Could have called 10,000 angels, but stayed there because he said there's a little boy down there in Carlton. He's going to need the blood. He's going to need me, and I'm going to stay here. Ain't nothing going to take me off of this cross. Amen. And we ought to praise him. He provided salvation. You listen, baptism won't get you to heaven. The Lord's Supper won't get you to heaven. Going to church faithfully won't get you to heaven. Fasting won't get you to heaven. It's all good, but it will not save your soul. But that cross in which he got on, he said, now who the Son set free is free indeed. And glory to God, I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. How I many of you are free tonight? Free. Bless God, nothing could set us free, but Jesus made us free and called us his own and called us the son of almighty God. We're free. Hallelujah, Hallelujah brother Randy. He provided that through his mercy. This book I'm preaching out of tonight, he provided it. This may be the last time this one gets to come to the pulpit, but I'm going to tell you something. There's a lot of blessings in this old book. And God's son, Jesus, because of that, provided it. Through the mercy of God, he provided this for us. Now, our problem is we don't read it enough. We'll take it home tonight and lay it on some table somewhere and won't pick it up again maybe till tomorrow night or Wednesday. But I'm going to tell you something. You want to know how to live? Open this. You want to know how to praise him? Open this. You want to know how to forgive others? Open this. You want to know how to be what God wants you to be? Open it up and read what God said about it. Everything that we need is found in the cross of Calvary. When you get up in the morning, you ought to bow your head and say, God, I want you to know that my faith is in what you did at Calvary plus nothing. And I know and I thank you for the atonement that you made when nothing else could go to glory where the Father was and make the atonement. He made it. Amen. And like I say, them things that I mentioned, there ain't nothing wrong with them. But we got folks that are still trying to go back to that old covenant and live under it under the law. We can't do that. The new covenant is Jesus Christ and him crucified. And brother, I am so glad tonight that I can say I never did have an earthly daddy that stayed with me, but I got a heavenly father. I got a heavenly father. And boy, he knows when I'm doing good and he knows when I'm doing bad. And just like he did for you, Nikki, he'll do for anybody. I claim the blood. And when you claim the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, all things are possible. Not just some things, but all things. And people get so disturbed over this all up here. The Bible said in James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And if it's any sick among you, let him call for the elders of the church and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall lift him up. You ever had God do something good for you in the way of healing? Yes. 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 
Amen. Anybody, anybody been touched by the Holy Ghost of God? Anybody been anointed with oil and Jesus done something for them? That's in the Bible. In case you didn't know it, James 5, you ought to read it. It ain't nothing in that all that'll get the job done. But brother, when you put your faith in the Lamb of God, it will get done. Now, I'm grateful for that. I'm thanking him for that. When I didn't have nowhere to go, I went to the doctor the other day. I got one doctor. And when I first started going to him, I asked him, I said, uh, Doc, you wouldn't mind if I pray for you before you start sticking me, do you? No. And he's called me twice this week. Bill, I want you to pray for me. Well, a doctor called the little heathen. Something good going on. I thought I misunderstood him the first time. I said, what you want me to do? He said, I want you to pray for me. He said, when are you going to get your ears fixed? I said, when you give me about $10,000. We laughed a little bit and he hung up. But that all still works. How do you know it works? You don't have to have somebody anoint you. You can anoint yourself. It's sitting on my desk at the house. I'm pretty greasy. <laughs> you say, what are you talking about, Brother Bill? I done fell off my barn twice this year. That's kind of crazy to get up there. I walked by that, tin blowed up. I said, leave it alone. I walked back by it, tin blowed up, leave it alone. I said, shoot, I can climb this ladder and fix that. About five minutes later, boom, I'm on the ground, and here comes the ladder. Hits me in the head, and I didn't hurt up there. But it hurt other places. So at home, I just take that all and say, it didn't necessarily mean I got to be in church. And I turn that little old bottle up, touch my head, and say, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Lord, I need these arms. I need these feet. I can't reach my toes no more. My daughter has to cut them off. And she's, I done stopped her because she's bad to get in the quick. She just gets that thing on the toe and now hold it, hold it, hold it. But you can anoint yourself. Enjoy the mercies of God and what God's got for you the plans he's got for you. Don't push him aside. Thank him for him. And come in here with a vision of God. If you were to go to Second Chronicles and read the very first verse of the seventh chapter, you'd see where they got to church, got to the temple. They couldn't enter in because of the glory of God. That's the way we ought to come to church. We ought to come in here with clapping. We ought to come in here praising the Lord. And it won't hurt you to speak to those you ain't spoke to in about two or three years. You'd be surprised what that'll do. Bitterness is a sin. Envy is a sin. And we don't need to run around and toll around sin in our life. We need to ask God to forgive us. But he provided not only salvation, not only this Bible, but the mercies of God allowed Christ to provide this church. My buddy's sitting right yonder. Y'all may not know. I ain't going to ask him to come up here because he, he's hopping. You, you need a little of that all on you, brother Dan. Tell him what I said, Willie. Stand up, brother Dan. You see this fellow right here? It looked like you needed the same thing I need. Anyway, he was the pastor down here when God told him, and everybody loved him and still do. And God told him to leave. And he left. I became his pastor. 
But we was in a little house over there, a military barrack. Anytime one of these little young ones moved around, you could hear like ducks or rabbits or something running all over the floor. They used to be in an airstrip right out here behind the church and then planes would take off and go toward the river. In 73, we built a building on the other side of this wall. In 75, we built another one over there. And in 75, Bill, you got saved in 75? Right after he got saved, we moved into that long one over on the side. Y'all done cut up in three or four different sections. But all of that been provided by God and by the mercies of God. And we ought to be thankful for that. Everybody don't have this. <clears throat> Look what you're sitting in. You ought to thank God for it. Look what you drove down here. You didn't have to ride on a wagon and a mule. There's a lot of folks used to come to church. They was faithful. They found out what their purpose was in life, and they would come to church in a wagon and stay all day. And some of y'all are already looking at your watch. First thing I noticed when I come back was that clock. I ain't used to no clock, am I, David? But because of the church and God blessing it, there's a lot of you from that old house until this building has been born again. And boy, I look out there and I, I wish I could, if I were to start calling names, I'd miss somebody. But there's a lot of you I never in a hundred years would have dreamed you'd ever showed up down here in church. Especially that one. And then old Payne come down here. If he comes out there where I am, I'm going to whip him. He's real spiritual. I came out there, and I got him, and right on the other side of this wall right here, he found something that changed his life completely. And brother, when nothing else will work, God still works. And you, need, you just need to understand that God's got a purpose for you. And the mercies of God, let me close with this. The mercies of God has provided a church. It provided salvation. It provided a Bible. And I ain't no telling how many blessings, but it also provided liberty. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That's what broke loose this morning. The liberty of God. That's all you can say for it. It give everybody the liberty to do whatever they want to do and praise the Lord. Now let me ask you tonight. Do you know what your purpose is in life? There again, let me rephrase this. You may not can sing, fine. You may not can be one that takes up offering, fine. You may not can preach, fine but you can occupy that pew with a faithful attitude and God will give you the liberty like you ain't never had before. And we, when you start looking forward to going to church on Sunday, man, Sunday's coming. Amen. Glory to God. And I know when I get down there, something good is about to happen. Somebody said, why you come so early? I get to talk to him and him. Brother Adam asked me this morning, after we'd done had a big blowout, he said, you preaching tonight? <laughs> I had to follow that. And it's hard to follow that. But you know what? God don't do the same thing twice. And what he's going to do tonight and what he's already done tonight, some of you stood up and shouted, amen? Amen. 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 If you... If you ever been where that girl right there has been, you'd turn up and shout too. Because the doctor called me off to the side and said, Preacher, I don't know what you need to tell her, <clears throat> but she's fixing to die. But before she dies, I want you to tell me what that banner is up there. And Wayne Williams was the one that sang it. I claim the blood. He said, What does that mean? 
It means that she is a Christian and she, the blood that was shed for her on Calvary, she's claiming it for healing. And God's still in the healing business. And don't ever doubt it. <clears throat> he can heal the sick. He can heal the lame. He can give sight to the blind. Don't doubt God. Just because maybe he ain't done it for you. He's done it for her. And man, all across this congregation, God's been good to us. And he's been good to you. Miss Sarah back there, missed for years, but she's back home now. Glory to God. How many of you are glad you stayed? Well, get up on your feet and praise him. Thank him for the liberty. Thank him for the mercy of God. This world won't never show mercy on you. They'll take everything you got, but they'll not show mercy like Christ did. Would you bow your head? With every head bowed and every eye closed in this place, and I'm going to promise you, Brother Bill, and not going to embarrass nobody. I don't know what your purpose is in life. I really don't. I don't know what you want God to do for you, but God does. Let me ask you this, and let's be honest tonight. Folks, we may not have many more Sundays together. So let's just be honest. If you're here tonight and say, Preacher, if I were to die tonight, I really don't know who I'd go. Pray for me. Would you just slip your hand up and put it down? Anywhere, anybody, just slip it up and put it down. Brother Bill, I don't really know where I'd go, but I don't want to burn in hell, I know that. Just slip it up and put it down. If you're in this building tonight and say, Brother Bill, I got some issues in my life. I need to find out God's purpose. Pray for me. Slip your hand up. I'll promise you in the morning I'll do that. I got some things I just ain't been able to handle. And I need help from God. And God will help you. He'll help you. Tonight, while Donna's getting ready to sing, when it seems like everything is falling apart, Jesus is the one that can put it back. I want you to look up and look at that picture one more time. It was the mercy of Almighty God that allowed that to happen. And it happened for a bunch of people that didn't even love him, didn't even care anything about him. But he did it out of love. As she sings this invitation hymn, if there's anything burdening you or bothering you, you get out of that pew. This is where we make a big mistake. We got things that's worrying us. We got things that's bothering us. But the devil will have us think, what will somebody think if you walk up here? A Christian will praise God. A Christian might just come and lay his hands on you and pray for you. But you mind your heart as she sings. Come on, get out of that pew. Come on. There is a blood and that blood it cost a life. That blood paid my way. The blood will still work. Death was its price and there's still and power in the blood <clears throat> down from the cross all my sins they were gone and all my sins they were forgotten there is a grave they tried to hide that precious blood they gave me life, but in three days he breathed again, and he, you know, he chose to stand in our defense. 
Come on. So I come, I come to tell you, to tell you he's, he's alive. alive. To tell you that he tries every tear that falls. Well, that one. And so I come to tell you that he saves. To shout and to proclaim oh, that he's coming back. Come on. And it still sights the blind. That blood still heals the sick. And that blood, the lonely, he still finds. That blood still has the power. And it can free the bound as their chains they fall upon the ground. So, Lord. Will you please pour it out and let it cleanse my soul and let your precious, your precious glory flow because you live to make me whole. Lord, I'll give you my life. I'm going to give you my all in all. Just blood they gave all of us life. But in three, three days, not another king, he breathed again, and he, he rose to stand in all of our defense. And so I Amen. Ain't he good? Turn around and tell your neighbor, God's good. Hug the neck. Do something. Now, don't you forget, tomorrow night, can you hear me? Tomorrow night, Brother Tommy Bates will be here. From Kentucky. You don't want to miss that. And I encourage you. 
Your purpose is to be here tomorrow night. So I'll be looking for you. Brother Randy, I'm done. Praise the Lord.